This is the first video in a series of video tutorials designed to show you the basics of using MapMaker to create maps for the Panzer Command battles. When you first start MapMaker, you need to tell it what size map you're going to be working in. Our tutorial is going to be using a 1000 by 1000 meter map, and that's the default for MapMaker. So I'll go ahead and say OK. After you start MapMaker, you should see the main Google interface map in the center of your screen. This is the work area you'll be using. To the right of that are the height map sculpting tools. We'll go over those in a later tutorial. The left column contains tools for texturing, adding structures to your map, adjusting the lighting on your map, and adjusting elevations on your map. Along the bottom are where you load and build your map. And then to the right of that are the Google interface tools that you'll be using in this tutorial. The first tool is the Google Maps toggle button. This toggles between the map work area and the Google Map interface. The next button toggles labels on the Google Map off and on. The next button gives you a, a zoom out view back to this view in case you zoom in and uh, can't locate yourself again. Pressing this button will bring you back to this view. The next button allows you to return to the map location that was last imported into MapMaker. And the next button is a find a location button. We'll be using that button shortly to uh, locate our map area that we'll be working with throughout this tutorial. The question mark button reports to you where uh, the map Maker is currently located. And the next buttons, uh, as well as the drop down, allow you to designate the size of the map to work on. Uh, Panzer Command right now works with one kilometer maps, so that's what we'll be using in this tutorial. When I click on the one kilometer button, Map Maker will zoom in uh, to a close up view of the current map location. In the upper left is the standard Google interface tools, and you can see the yellow outline of the one kilometer area. If you, you <clears throat> use the mouse wheel as well to zoom, if you press the left button and drag, you can move your map location around. And to get back to the zoom out view, I press the uh, zoom out button and we'll be back where we uh, were. The easiest way to find a location on the map is to use the find a location button. In the pop-up dialog, simply type in the name of a nearby village. Uh, in this case, we're going to be making our map for Nicolino, Russia. So I type in Nicolino space Russia and click OK. MapMaker takes you to that location. It's a good idea at this point to look around the map and make sure that you're at the correct location just in case there's uh, a couple of places with the same name. Note the yellow rectangle that denotes our one kilometer map area. Uh, this is too small to, to work with, so I'm going to press the one kilometer button again, and MapMaker will zoom in to a close up view of that location. Note the yellow rectangle that delineates the area that will be imported. And it's not quite where I want the map, so I'm going to use the left mouse button 
press it and drag the map to just uh, get the map boundaries where I want them. I wanted that road junction uh, on the right hand side. I want to get the woods on the left and the woods in the lower area. So I think I've got it just about where I want it. So now I'm going to go ahead on the upper left and import the height map. I press that button and if you'll notice when I hover over the button you can see a tooltip pop up. MapMaker has tooltips for the buttons on almost all of the buttons in MapMaker has a tooltip associated with it which makes it nice. Once the SRTM data has been gathered you will see the data screen pop up and you can look at some details about the map, map coordinates, and then along the, at the bottom area of the pop-up screen are some max and min elevations for this specific area. And just right below that is a, a question asking if you want to smooth the map before you, as you're importing the elevation data into MapMaker. I'm going to say yes and let MapMaker do the smoothing work. Uh, you're also MapMaker displays the height map and you'll see it go through the smoothing operation. Uh, I'm going to toggle back to the Google Map view and see the area that I'm going to be importing. I'll, in the upper left I'll press the Import the Terrain Map button and MapMaker will start the uh, process of gathering the data for importing the Google Map image. If you look at the lower right you'll see a, a, a message displayed saying what's being done. When it's gathered the information it'll ask you how you'd like to process this information. I like the defaults uh, using uh, a filter of three and reducing this to about eight unique colors. That seems to work well most of the time so I'm going to accept the defaults and press OK. When MapMaker has finished processing the data, it's going to pop another uh, dialog box up along with an image of the processed map. I've actually paused the recording because this process sometimes takes several minutes to complete. But once it's completed, you'll see this pop up uh, asking if you want to import this map. I'm going to say yes. It actually looks pretty good to me. I think we can work with this map pretty well. So I'm going to say yes to that. And now uh, MapMaker is going to proceed to actually import this map into MapMaker and this will make up your terrain map. Once MapMaker is completed scanning and classifying the map areas, you'll notice that the controls on the left are no longer grayed out. And we're uh, able now to actually continue working with our map in MapMaker. This is probably a, a good time to uh, end this tutorial. But before we do, I want to go over how to save our map work. So in the lower left, in the name field, we'll type in the name that we want to give this map. In this case, I'm going to name it Nicolino. Uh, and I'll simply type that name into this field. Once I do that, I'll press the uh, Build the Map button, which is two buttons to the right. MapMaker will create and save all the files needed for uh, rebuilding this map. Uh, when a pop-up comes up asking about scene edit, we'll say no, and that will end our tutorial. In the next tutorial, we'll cover texturing our map. Thank you.